Chris Wright, Chief Executive Officer and Chairman of Liberty Energy. Welcome on the Business Brief. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Chris, it's a real treat to have you here. Chris, the Ukraine-Russia crisis still unfolding. Oil and gas prices, the highest they've been in years. Americans are really filling it at the gas pump these days, even more so as it seems the price and cost of everything is rising faster than wages and salaries and income in general. What's your take and how can Colorado and America's oil and gas producers help solve for this? It is a real challenge. Oil and gas, energy in, gen in general are foundational to our lives. And when those prices go up, everything gets more expensive and pinches our pocketbooks. So everybody wants, including us in the industry, want to see energy prices come down. Look, the U.S. is the largest producer in the world of oil and gas. Unfortunately, Russia is number two. But growing U.S. production, if we can get back on a good growth track and growing right here in Colorado can drive up supply, downward pressure on prices, and, and positive for the environment as well, just cleaner practices here than overseas. So oil and gas continues to be under heavy fire with escalating concerns around climate change. There are some who only paint a negative view of the industry. You've acknowledged in the past some of the negative impacts within the industry. Can you address that? And what are the benefits? Yeah, of, of course, everything comes with trade-offs. I mean, oil and gas has enabled us a modern world, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles and modern medicine. But do they come at a cost? Of course they come at a cost. And greenhouse gas emissions that our industry has been the dominant driver of have grown. And of course, that's a trade-off. That's a cost. So what we've tried to do is how, to, how do you get both? How do you have the advantages of a modern world and drive emissions down? The movement from coal to natural gas in the U.S. electricity sector, that has driven emissions down. The movement of more oil and gas production insourced in the United States versus overseas in countries with less good practices, that's been driving emissions down. And the movement from older production practices to more modern production practices also drives greenhouse gas emissions down. And Colorado has been a pioneer in that, really a driver of that. So the Colorado practices are starting to get adopted across the country, and that's helping us produce oil and gas and drive emissions down. Chris, on a recent CNBC interview, you mentioned we are seeing a world with underinvestment in oil and gas, and that you expect in the years ahead, we are going to see a need for increased investment in this sector. Why? Can you share more? Yes, look, the shale revolution over the last 10 years, I, I celebrate, has been great for the world because there's been a flood of new oil and natural gas, which has pushed down the global prices of those commodities. But in the last five years or so, there's been a growing enthusiasm about an energy transition movement. I get it. I've worked in the energy transition movement. The problem is it's hard and it's a slow process. So we've had years of huge investment in sort of new energy sources, but they, they, that's slow and gradual. And we've seen an underinvestment globally, not just in the US, in oil and natural gas. Even independent of Russia and Ukraine, that's led to tightening markets. That concerns me tremendously. The, the, this, the, this really, this energy crisis, and we are in an energy crisis. It began last September, independent of Russia and Ukraine, this huge rise in global natural gas prices. I'll, I'll end with saying, look, natural gas is the key ingredient to make nitrogen fertilizer. Food prices are rising now, and they're going to rise more in the coming year. That scares me. But we've just underinvested in oil and natural gas production globally. That needs to change. Liberty Energy is rolling out an electric frack fleet this year. Say that twice, an electric frack fleet. Tell us a little bit more about that and how our ESG, environmental social governance trends, whether it be health and safety or particularly efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions going to further influence the industry. Yeah, so this is part of our industry getting better. It's been a four year effort for us to develop a next generation frack fleet from the ground up, kind of mirrors some of the changes that have gone on in the US. We're gonna generate electricity with natural gas burning reciprocating engines. It's sort of a new generation of engines that have lower emissions for the same amount of electricity and also compatibility to be able to use power from the grid if there's grid power available. So this drives down emissions lower than any other frack fleets available today. And it should have improved operational performance, 
in improved emissions of pollutants as well, not just greenhouse gas emissions coming down, but also other pollutants that, gen that are generated from diesel engines reduced. So we're quite excited about this technology. It's been a multi-year effort and it's gonna debut in two of my favorite oil bases, the Permian Basin of West Texas, probably the biggest oil field in the world today, and right here in Colorado, because of Colorado's cutting edge efforts to be better and to be at the front of that pack. So we're very excited. We'll have those frack pumps here in Colorado just in a few months later this year. Excited about that, is, that step forward. That, that is exciting. Chris, I do want to circle back just real quickly and button this down though for, for the viewers and folks who are listening right now who are feeling that pain at the pump. You know, if you're talking to the president or you're talking to the governor about Colorado's oil and gas sector, about America's oil and gas producers, what advice are you giving to them right now to say, hey, do this and this can help get these prices under control so that Americans have some relief at the pump and ultimately can afford to actually live in the homes, heat their homes and, and fuel their vehicles and, and overall just live their life? The biggest message is to shrink the regulatory burden. We need oil and gas to power our society. In fact, it's great for our economy. We're a huge exporter. We're the second biggest exporter of natural gas in the world, but it's becoming increasingly hard to produce oil and natural gas in the United States. I get the desire to do it better and that's happening, but the burden today is so large, very hard. You don't even know if you're gonna get permits on federal land. We've got all different regulatory agencies that really seem to be in an effort to reduce oil and gas production in the United States, often justified in the name of climate change. But this isn't a climate benefit at all. It doesn't change demand for oil and gas. It just moves production out of the clean practices of the United States and displaces it to dirtier areas. So let's get realistic. The energy transition is exciting. Liberty is involved in that as well. But we have to be realistic about what powers people's lives. The price of energy matters and the security of energy supplies matter to all of our lives. Chris Wright with Liberty Energy. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me.